Hey everybody, this is Scott. So, I like to do a little bit of painting from time to time, and usually the paintings that I do end up being on the brighter side. But occasionally, I like to do paintings that are more earth-toned and tuned down from what I normally do. So I've got some examples of those here behind me. Now, one of the first ones I did is this piece right here. So what I did is I took a small canvas and I spilled some tan colored paints and some brown colored paints on it. And then I ended up adding some copper metallic paint and some bronze metallic paint and a little bit of gold metallic paint. So after that, I built this frame and then I attached the canvas to the frame using these small wires in each corner. So how I built the frame is I ended up cutting out a piece of plywood and then I nailed some old fence wood to the front of it and then around the outside edges and the inside edges. Now, as you can see, some of the wood is really rustic, like this piece right here. So, um, here's another one that I did that's very similar. Um, the main difference is the canvas is quite a bit longer, but built, you know, in a very similar style. Now, here's one that I did where I found this piece of wood that had some nice curved edges. So rather than cut the piece of wood straight and put full trim pieces on both sides, um, I ended up leaving those curved edges and just putting a small trim piece on the outside edge and the inside edge. So after I did these three pieces right here, I ended up doing these two, this one here and that one there. Now, this started out as one long piece of wood that I cut in half. So I don't remember if this piece was down here or up here. But anyway, um, how I did this one is I, instead of putting the canvases straight, I ended up turning the canvases like this. And as you can see, this piece of wood has quite a few cracks in it. So I didn't want the piece of wood to split apart. So I ended up stapling these small um, pieces of oak on the back just to hold everything together. So after I built these two, I wanted to build something a little bit bigger. So I ended up doing this one right here. Now this one here has some nice long straight pieces of wood on each side of it. And then I put smaller pieces in the middle and on the top and on the bottom. So um, after I did this one, I didn't want to do the exact same thing again. So I ended up doing this one here. Now, when I'm doing woodworking projects, a lot of times I'm out cutting wood and there's some small scraps left with some nice knots or something in it. And, you know, I don't want to just throw that wood away. So what I end up doing is I end up putting those small pieces of wood either on one of my shelves or on one of my pallets outside. So, um, you know, with this one here, I didn't try to follow any sort of pattern. I just kind of randomly nailed the pieces of wood to the plywood in the back. So I figured this is what I'm gonna to do today, is something very similar. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I, I painted a whole bunch of these canvases, okay? I probably have two or three dozen of them. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find two canvases that I like, and that's where it all begins. And then I'm gonna go out to my shop and I'm gonna start building a frame in a very similar style to show you guys exactly how I do it. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and I guess we'll see what happens.
Okay, so I'm about ready to get started on this frame and I found a couple of canvases that I like. So that's where the frame construction begins is around these canvases to make sure they're gonna fit right. And the other thing I try to do when building a frame like this is I try to use small pieces of wood and um, I look for pieces with knots in them or just some kind of nice grain pattern um, or just something that you know isn't really common I like to find pieces that are unique and I like different colors and different shapes and different sizes so um, you know like I got a piece of walnut here now I may clean this up with a wire wheel I don't know but I'm just gonna try to use a variety of wood on this one now, the other thing that I think about when I'm building a frame is weight. So, if I was gonna build a frame with a lot of straight, full-length pieces on it, then I could probably get away with using a really thin piece of plywood, like quarter inch or three-eighths inch. But this frame's gonna have a lot of really small pieces on it. So, it's not gonna have a lot of strength overall. So, I'm gonna use a half-inch piece of plywood. Now, I know it's gonna have full length pieces going all the way around the edges, but I don't want it to have any flexibility in the, in the middle. So I think half inch will be fine. And I think three quarter or even five eighths would probably be overkill. So anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the plywood and then I'm gonna start nailing some of these pieces on it and get this thing going. Okay, so the piece of plywood's been cut, and I'm just about ready to start installing some pieces of wood onto it, but there's one small detail I wanted to mention before moving on. Now, a lot of the pieces that I install onto the plywood will either be a slightly darker color than the plywood, and some will be a much darker color than the plywood. And a lot of times, those pieces of wood will have very small gaps between them, so you'll still be able to see the plywood between the gaps, so what I like to do is I like to just spend a couple of minutes and pre-paint the plywood black. And that way if there are small gaps between the pieces, the black will help make the plywood disappear much better than the regular plywood color.
Okay, so I just got done installing all the pieces on the front of the frame. And you'll notice how I left the pieces uneven all the way around the edges and in the middle. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the frame over like this and I'm gonna take my skill saw and I'm gonna rip off all this wood that's hanging over the frame and I'm gonna make it even all the way around. And then after that, I'm gonna take some trim pieces and install the trim pieces all the way around and in the middle. And after that, probably put some polyurethane on it and install the canvases. Okay, so I just got done trimming around the edges and occasionally when I'm trimming around the edges of a frame like this, something will get damaged. Now with a rustic piece, sometimes there's a really fine line between what could be considered damage and what could be considered as part of the art. Now in this case, what happened is because of this knot, a big chunk of this piece of wood broke out. Now. You'll notice that around the rest of the frame, there's no other chunks of wood broken out anywhere around the outside border. So if there was another chunk of wood broken out, say down here, then this would be perfectly fine. But as it is, I just feel like this piece, because it's broken so badly right here, might actually be a distraction for the piece rather than a benefit. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and replace it, and then I'm gonna move on and get the border installed.
Okay, I just finished installing the trim pieces and for the most part, they turned out really good. Now, this is the point where I like to go over the frame and look it over very carefully and fly, find any flaws and defects and fix them before I put the polyurethane on. Now, it's a rustic frame, so it's full of flaws and defects, but most of those flaws are what makes a frame like this work. But there are some flaws that I'm not really happy with, like right here. As I was shooting a nail in this trim piece right here, the nail hooked out and it blew a piece of wood out of this piece right here. So I've got a couple of different ideas about how I can make this look a little bit better. So I'm definitely going to do something with that. And then down here, I had a little bit more of a gap than I wanted between the trim piece and the piece in the front. So I'm going to fill this gap with some liquid nails in the back. And then once the liquid nails dries, I'll be able to squeeze some glue into this crack and then lightly sand over that glue and that'll help make this crack less visible. So beyond that, um, I'm just going to fill nail holes, very lightly sand the front, definitely not go overboard with the sanding because there's a point where I could actually ruin this piece if I did. And I'll probably... Um, do some grinding along this back edge and and get rid of these really sharp edges back here and once that's done i'm going to put the polyurethane on and hang the canvases and get it done
Okay, so the frame's all done, and I got the paintings hanging inside it. And I've got to tell you guys, I had a really good time doing this one. There's something fun about just installing wood at a random pattern with no real plan. So next time you're doing a woodworking project and you have a bunch of scraps of wood left over, make sure you look carefully at them before you throw them in the garbage. Because sometimes they'll have knots or interesting grain patterns, and you can give them a second chance and a second life by doing some sort of project with them. And one thing I would recommend if you do try doing a random rustic woodworking project, try to trust your first instinct as much as possible and try not to overthink things. Because usually what ends up happening is your first instinct ends up being the best one. And when you try to overthink things, sometimes you can become frustrated and maybe even end up losing interest in the project. So anyway, I hope you guys found at least some of the ideas in this video helpful, and I hope I see you on the next one.